Uh, so welcome back to 93.7 The Ticket. We're doing the score. This is Peter Ferguson of Peter Ferguson BHS LLC and Lincoln Public Schools. And um, got Harrison here on the board, and we're just kind of chopping it up a little bit. He's still trying to convince me that there's a game going on today, but I just had to kind of push him off to the side. Okay. You Cowboys <laughs> fans, man. I don't know. That's a good look for you, Pete. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's the look. It's the look I'm going to wear. It's the look, look I'm going to wear. But, hey, no, we've got some phenomenal um, individuals here, and I'm, I'm excited. we got Coach Venner. Um, I, Coach Stuart Venerable, who's a longtime friend, but also um, a not only a scholar, he's a consistent scholar. He's not a scholar of age, but he's always a, a somebody learning, but he's also the strength and um, P coach and a number of other things over at North Star High School. And then we got Callie. How you doing? Good. She's all excited. Look at her. She, so I messed up her school on the Twitter. She is at SCO Middle School doing her thing. And so how both of you, welcome. How you doing today? Awesome. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, Callie, we're going to get to you a quick, just a quick minute. Coach, just kind of remind people who you are, where you're from, um, you know, kind of, you told us about your journey last time you were on, but um, just what are you doing right now? Kind of some updates. Uh, right now, really, we're really focusing on the middle schools. We want to get the uh, middle schools in Lincoln Public School up to a level where the athletes can, or student athletes can go straight from the middle school to the high school and be already primed for weight training classes instead sort of bringing them into the high school and then introducing them and then bringing them along. And then in a year or two, they're ready to get to some more intense training. If we get these middle schools online, like uh, Dr. Davies plan in the next two years, they have the rest of the middle schools done. Then when they hit the ground at ninth grade, they hit the ground with their feet running, we'll be ready to go right away. So that gives us four full years to develop them athletically. Well, and I, I mean, I think that's, that's fantastic because I think as you think about progression and what we talked about earlier is just mindset, but physically being ready, we've got scholars that are really active in a lot of different things. And I don't mean just in Lincoln, but just, the, you know, across the country, but the state, you're seeing, you know, we preach that multi-involved or multi-sport type individual. And so getting that exposure early, that's something that we've always talked about is extremely important. Right, right. And I agree 100%. And we think, um, because we have such a, a mixture of club sports overlapping with high school sports and students doing other things outside of the sporting life that, that we have to do what we can in hopes of injury reduction. So that's that's the big hope with this middle school thing. In the middle school, the teachers are just chomping at the bit to start training these kids. So it's a pretty exciting time for LPS in the middle schools. Well, I think the other neat part about it is we talk about the club and the middle school sports, but also this exposure and access and awareness. So a lot of scholars we've talked about, you know, there's different socioeconomic, there's different opportunities. And so making sure that we have some equity that everybody gets exposed to those type of things. And so that's a great segue um, with Cali. You um, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're here, you're bright and early. You're one of those middle schoolers. You're, you're, you're lifting not only the bar. I've seen some of your videos. So now he's about ready to go ahead and put some work in. <laughs> so tell us about yourself. Well, uh, like you said, I go to SCO Middle School. And I do weightlifting with Coach Venable. And I've played well, – I did cross country in the fall for SCO. I also did basketball just recently. I am playing basketball – Right now, I have games later today uh, for Timberwolves. Okay. Um, I also play softball for Millard Fury. Okay. Um, and our first tournament is an indoor tournament in Omaha at the beginning of March. Awesome. So you're not busy at all. No. <laughs> yeah, you just sit around. <laughs> you know, you're going to watch. There's, there's supposedly some game on today, but you're not going to miss nothing, so you'll be good. <laughs> no. So um, tell us, have you always gone to school here in, in Lincoln? Um, kind of tell us, just you know, like I said, you said you go to school right now, but where did you go to elementary school? Uh, I went to Campbell Elementary. Okay. Um, I've also, I've like, I've stayed in Lincoln, but I've like switched schools. Okay. Um, so like my sixth grade year, I went to Goodrich. Okay. And then I uh, switched schools to SCO. Fantastic. And so family, who's, who's I know you got, you got somebody here supporting you. You're not able to quite drive yet. They didn't want you on the scooter this morning. So um, give a shout out to who's in your family. Um, my dad and my mom. I don't know if she's listening, but okay. hopefully. Um, and then I have an older brother, Ethan, and then a younger brother, Paxton. Awesome. Awesome. So Coach Venerable, you know, sitting here with Callie hearing all the things that she's involved in. Um, tell us, you know, you talked about the importance a little bit, but tell us kind of what progression have you seen with somebody like Callie that, like, you know, um, it's benefited her, you know, being exposed not only to like weights, but 
um, some of the other things that you do, whether it's body movements or or just other other areas that would help her with her performance. Yeah, I think the uh, you know the the elephant in the room is her strength. So if you see, like you said, you've seen her on the videos that you can tell Callie is consistently getting stronger week by week. But for me, that that part is the low hanging fruit. The most important part was that they move well. That's the most important part at the high school level. That I want you to move well first, and then we can add the external resistance because the weight will come. They'll get stronger. That's not hard to do. But getting the athlete to move well, especially in these uh, times with uh, electronics and media that we use, it, it that's that's the horse of a different color. And that started me down the trail with this uh, neurological training and being brain based and. And Callie would tell you, when we train, you see the videos, and I put the red meat out there so people can see her moving heavy weight, but the training of the division training with the eyes, the vestibular training, when you're training the balance, um, the, the intangibles, the confidence she's gaining just from lifting um, and being in that environment with other kids. And honestly, in that group she's in, she's my only female. The other kids are all male, but she's the strongest athlete I have right now. So it's, it's pretty interesting to see. But the, the intangibles, are more important to me than than putting numbers on the bar, I would say. So, so Callie, you know, Coach talked a little bit about just the movement parts and things, but what was it like when you first kind of walked in, <laughs> you know, that, that first day and you see Coach Venerable, and I know you had some exposure to him with, with the basketball group prior, but what was it like when you walked into the garage and he was like, okay, this is what we're going to do? Well, he was very intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> He's got that shirt that says sit-ups and push-ups and pull-ups and squats. I'm like, this like work us into it a little bit. Yeah, um, I was very quiet. And in my head, I was I didn't know if I was going to stick with it. But as I progressed, like I didn't know a lot of things that we were doing. So as my brain processed and I progressed in the things that we were doing. And when I went later on in the year, um, and just seeing my progress on those videos, like in my head, I was like, I want to continue doing this. I really like this. Like I'm getting stronger. My brain is working different parts that I never would have worked of. It worked at if I wasn't with him. Like it's just a bunch of different things that I really enjoy. Well, and you talked about that progress a little bit. Like, so, you know, how have you seen it on videos, but have you seen it other places? Like your confidence, um, you know, as you're playing, do you feel like, okay, I'm stronger? Um, where else have you seen, you know, seen kind of progression? Since I've started, like, I've gotten a lot of, like, upper body strength, which is what I've needed to play softball and basketball. Mm -hmm. And even in starting this year for basketball, I started making a bunch of threes. Like, I mm -hmm. can shoot it at a comfortable, like, rate and make them. And same with softball. Like, I got my first in the park home run over the fall. There you go. And that's just a bunch of upper body strength, which I've really worked on since working with him. No, fantastic. And so, Coach, you talked about things you've seen with her, but like if, if a parent's like, you know, you know, you always hear, I don't, you know, I don't want them to get into this too soon or they're going to bulk up or, you know, I'm afraid of injury and things like that. Like, give some advice. What does that look like? What should that look like maybe in elementary school? What should that look like in middle school? And then as they progress to high school? Well, honestly, I'm I'm a big fan of the of the primitive movement pattern. So things that you see babies do, the the rolling, the crawling, um, um, the rolling over, uh, the crab walks, th those primitive movements and games that we used to play in PE that we don't play as much in PE because we're more focused on organized and structured games. Those primitive movement patterns are the foundation for what we get to later, and then we get to. Like you said, the stuff I have on my shirt where we start doing the body weight stuff and we're doing um, the pull-ups, the push-ups, the squats, the sit-ups. And then from there, then we start moving into the lighter weight part. But the whole time we're doing that, we're still working on things, um, running mechanics, jumping mechanics, landing mechanics, which are more important than the jumping mechanics. So it's multifactorial and you have to blend it all in and you have to progress all of it because if you leave any of it out you're missing a big piece of the pie wow no and i guess i would have never thought about that i mean mm -hmm. i think right there i'm like okay get to the room get to the bar you got push-ups but it's those basic things that people can probably they have done on their own and right. should be doing on their own right and that's the thing they have done them before they can do them on their own but the the lack of consistency is what holds most people back if you could hold somebody accountable and say look if you could do this every day or every other day at least they will be so much better off wow
Well, you're on uh, Bigger Than the Score on 93.7 The Ticket, and we're joined here by Coach Stuart Venerable, who's a LPS uh, strength conditioning coach. Also does some stuff independently. And then Pally, who is a scholar at SCO Middle School. Want to make sure I got that right. Uh, shout out to the individuals over there. So, so Callie, kind of talk a little bit about just who's been mentors in your life. You talked about all the things that you do, softball, basketball, um, you did cross country, um, which is which is awesome. But who have been some people that have been mentors for you? Um, probably the big ones, my parents, um, and also my older brother. He got me. He like started the foundation for sports in my family. Like he, that's why I wanted to get into sports. I wanted to be like him. I wanted to be a catcher in uh, baseball or softball like he was. Wow. Um, he started playing basketball, which is how I got into basketball. He did soccer for a year. I did soccer for a year. <laughs> yeah. um, now, now you were better, right? Yeah. Without question. <laughs> without question. There you go. Um, but he's just like started the foundation of like my sports and my athletics. And then I've built it up more than he ever did because I've been just a lot more involved. Like I started with Venable earlier because he started with him in, when he was a freshman. Wow. I started in sixth grade. Mm -hmm. So it just like he built the foundation of what I wanted to do when I was older. So when you talk about building that foundation, your mindset, how you're articulating those things, um, or well beyond your years, what what is some what's some advice that you would give to your peers um, right now? Um, just push through it, anything, like whether it's school, sports, even like doing like show choir or speech, like mm -hmm. just push through the hard times, and when it gets hard. Just keep on going because it'll always turn out better in the end. And we've always asked the question, what's some advice you would give to like parents or guardians um, who are watching this journey? Because uh, knowing your parents, they've been very supportive and they've looked for opportunities, but also kind of has taken on the role of just being the parent. They don't, you know, maybe they are, but they haven't stepped in and like overcoached or, or said, coach, this is what she needs to do. She should be lifting it this way. Um, what what advice would you have for parents? Well, if you have like a child who's with a coach, if you feel like something's wrong, don't put it into like a negative way. Make it into like a positive. So say, I understand that you're doing this and I like that, but maybe because she or he's doing this type of movement different than the other kids, can you switch it up maybe and tell him or she how to do it a little bit differently? Wow. I mean, that's, that's well spoken. I was going to say, we need to make a book because I think every week we get some advice where I just think we just we need to tell DP to just go ahead and, and do like parent meetings <laughs> at, at things. So, uh, Coach Venerable, some of the same things. I mean, what advice would you give to, to young people, <laughs> to scholars? And then what's some advice that you would give to parents? For the young people, I would say, get your sleep. I think that's the primary thing. Every day in high school, yeah. when when the athletes start coming into the weight room, my thing is, how much did you sleep last night? And it's mind boggling to me because you know I I'm trying to get into bed by nine o'clock, nine thirty <laughs> if I can. The kids are up until midnight one, yeah. and I was like, you, no matter what we do in the weight room, it won't benefit you if you're not well rested. So you have to get your sleep. You have to get your hydration. They don't. They in my, my younger um, clientele, they don't seem to like uh, water and hydration as much as they like the, the Red Bull and the Takis, like Hot Cheetos or Monster. So, you know. We better, uh, put, it, we better yeah. put that stuff away. Yeah, here, so. yeah the sleep and the hydration are, are the most important parts. You got that part right, then it's time for me to step in and help them. And to the parents, I would say we have a limit in our bucket and that you have to be careful that you don't do too much with your child trying to keep up with the Joneses. So I'm, I'm all for a multi-sport athlete. And you know this, Pete, we've talked about this number of times. I am a big fan of multi-sport athlete, but I'm a big fan of giving a kid enough time um, to rest, recover, and to play and to be a kid as well. You know, and I think what you said was powerful. And um, I've seen you practice that. And so as you spoke about that, um, you know, talk, you have a daughter. Yes. Uh, you have a couple of children, yes. but you have a daughter now who's a uh, sophomore over at Pius. And right. You're, you're going to bounce here in a little bit to go see her play volleyball. Just talk about, because you practice what you preach. Right. You know, you do the same thing with her that you do with others. And so talk about what that journey has been like being a dad and, and kind of having all this knowledge, but also kind of balancing 
um, you know, letting her still be a young person. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's difficult for parents. So I understand, I understand your pain. You want them to to be the best they can be, and you want them to have say so in what it is that they're doing because it is their journey. But you also have to understand the frontal lobe of that brain isn't developed until they're mm -hmm. 26. So the 14 year old can't make up the mind. The 16 year old can't completely run the show. So Faith had some say so, but Shelly and I, we are guiding her down this path. Um, it was difficult because she's playing school volleyball and club volleyball. She was mm -hmm. playing basketball for school um, when she was in middle school and she was playing, she played club basketball mm -hmm. for you. Um, then once she went to high school, she played basketball her freshman year, but now the volleyball went from, okay, we're practicing two or three nights a week to we're practicing five nights a week. When that would have been in our eyes, that would have been too much. So we had to let the basketball go to the uh, devastated my wife. Right, right. <laughs> my wife was a baller. <laughs> so uh, she, she didn't understand. This is a different time. When we came up, you we didn't have club. You had school and you had three, three seasons and that was it. And you had the summer. So it, it's a difficult uh, it's a difficult decision, but you have to make the tough decisions of what you see in your child is uh, genetically gifted to play and what they'll do best in and what they like, and then let them have some input in that decision. But if you overwork them, you, you you're going to head right down the path to injury. Wow, no, no, and I and I've watched you. I mean, we've had a lot of heart to heart conversations, not only just about the physical aspect, but also kind of the the social type of things that will come forward um, in that journey. So that's that's been um, interesting to watch, but also you know watching you guide others has been really really cool in a lot of ways. Um, Kelly, what do you what do you what do you see your future hold for you um, outside of state championships and numerous things? Um, <laughs> what, what's your future hold? Uh, I just want to go to college. Okay. Uh, I want to get, if I don't get a scholarship for college in like sports, I want to get it in academics. Okay. Um, Where, what, what are in academics? Um, I don't know. I just want to go to college. Okay. That's what I've wanted to do since I was really young. Awesome. Awesome. And so um, do you have like a area that you see yourself in and you want to put your shout out for, you know, NIL stuff for Nebraska right now? Uh, where, 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 where are you looking? Um, where, where would be your dream, so so to speak? I really want to go to Kansas State. Okay. Um, and I want to like work in like creative fields. Wow. Um, because a lot of people do engineering mm -hmm. or like mathematics, but creative um careers work a different part of the brain that most people don't work, and it just give a better opportunity. I think just to be a little bit different from everybody else. No, I think that's cool in a lot of ways. I mean, as you think about it, I mean, that's why we're sitting here a lot of ways. <laughs> and I think, you know, our brain, my sister's an engineer, and I, I mean, love her to death, and, and it just takes gifted in so many ways. Um, but it just, it's a different type of individual. Just when you talk about education, those who work with, wife does preschool kids. I primarily is middle and high school, some elementary. And so it just, you need all those individuals to kind of make a community go and uh, make a country move forward. So you're going to crush it at whatever you do. You really are. Uh, Coach Venerable, um, kind of tell us what's, what's on the horizon. You told, told us a little bit with LPS and kind of getting that middle school, but you know, what's there for elementary? Like what's, what's there for, for those high school scholars? Um, maybe it's more so making that transition. I guess maybe I'm going to shift that, making that transition from, you know, winter sports to spring sports. Um, what should they be looking at? Yeah, I was say what they should be looking at is whatever it is you're going to do, start that the season before. And by that, I mean, if you are a spring athlete, you're a track athlete, and you're going to play whatever, you're sprint, you're going to jump in the spring. Then after that Christmas break, and we go back in January, you should start – to sprint now you should start your jumping now you get january and february down and you've already have the uh you have the body acclimated to that then when the season starts you'll be prepared what we see a lot of is the coaches only have x amount of time to get you from point a to point b so they have their plan laid out and if the athlete is not ready because they didn't do anything the previous two or three months Again, we go down that path to injury. So whatever it is you're going to do for whatever season, the season prior to that, start doing that. Now, I've heard you say that with basketball, like, hey, because the club season is over, you can't go a whole year without putting the basketball in your mm -hmm. hand. You keep got, you know, you got to do what you do. 
Awesome. Thank you. Callie, shout out to your team real quick. Uh, Millard Fury Football and uh, Timberwolves. Awesome. Awesome. Good luck today and afternoon. Thank you both for being here. You're on 93.7 The Ticket. Bigger than the score. We'll be right back.